Hey, good morning, Providence family. Any guests who are watching, tuning in? Pastor JB here again in the uh, prayer room. Uh, some of you commented that uh, last, or I guess it was Tuesday, behind me the words were backwards. That's because I had the selfie cam going. Um, this time, in order to avoid all of that distraction, I flipped it around. It's also really distracting when you're doing a selfie live video and you get a phone call and you're like, oh, is the video still taping? And it was. But, hey, it is Friday morning. It is good to be able to share from God's Word with you. We were able to record the service last night, and uh, it was wonderful. It was wonderful to be together. It was wonderful to worship. Uh, man, we sang one of my, my new favorite songs uh, during that recorded worship, King of Kings. Oh, just a, a powerful retelling and um, worshiping God because of the good news of Jesus Christ. So look forward to that. Also Sunday, we will be worshiping outdoors. The, the weather, once again, looks like it's going to be cooperating. And uh, we're going to be worshiping 930 outside in the back of church, Parsonage Front Lawn. And uh, so join with us for either of those opportunities to worship. But today, uh, I get to share from God's Word. And uh, Tuesday, I shared from Matthew 18. And I want to just pick up where we left off. Uh, Matthew 18, the disciples come to Jesus and ask him, who is, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus puts, puts a, a child, like a really young child, um, maybe even like a toddler, in front of the disciples and said, uh, you know, whoever wants to be great, right, must become like one of these, like a child. And it's about status, not, not to be seeking status and, and, and power, but to be willing to be one of the least. And of course, Jesus lives that example. And, uh, but this con he continues um, in verse 10. Um, and this child is, is likely still sitting or standing or sitting among the disciples. And Jesus continues, you'll recognize this uh, well-known parable. We're probably more familiar with um, Jesus, um, the retelling of the account from uh, Luke's gospel. But here, starting with verse 10. So, Matthew 18, verse 10. And then we'll, I'll just share some thoughts on that, and then we'll, we'll sing another song. Jesus says, See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Then he goes and tells a parable. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep, and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. The word of the Lord. This is the, the parable of the lost sheep. It's, it's Matthew's account of Jesus' parable of the lost sheep. And, uh, you know, when I was in Israel two years ago, well, I guess it's almost, maybe it's almost three years ago, I was, I was in Israel and we, uh, we got to see the kind of the landscape and, and see this landscape where Jesus would have shared this parable. And, uh, of course, it's a, it's a different landscape than what we think of today with with sheep, it's, it's rocky terrain. It's uh, the the grass is kind of hard to find, um, and the land is kind of treacherous. I mean, there's there's cliffs and there's mountains and um, there's there's other wild animals, and and so for a sheep to go astray, it's it's a big deal. Well, we, we you know what's kind of been rumbling in my mind um, this week is, you know, one of the things we've we've talked a lot about is regarding our culture, is our culture's value of kind of this, this hyper-individualism, right? And we've spe we've, we, speak about, we speak against that often, right? This kind of hyper-individualism that the world uh, kind of revolves around me. In fact, I kind of have my own world, and, and I'm the master of this world. This is kind of the value of our culture, right? This hyper-individualistic. And the messages we get feed into that, that so much. I mean, Mark, marketing uh, strategists, experts, they, they have become experts at 
tapping into that kind of carnal, individualistic, selfish desire. And, and we mark it, they mark it to that desire, right? Um, and so making you believe you, you need to have this car or this uh, clo- piece of clothing or whatever it is and because you are important and, and, and you need this and, and, you know. So, and we speak against that because, of course, God's word tells us that, you know, the world doesn't revolve around me. And so an attitude that, that says the world should bend its knee to me and, and all these things should cater to my needs, we, we, we speak against that, of course. Of course, absolutely. But it's also important, um, and this is what I've been thinking about, it's also important to speak against the other extreme, which would have been the, extre- the more of the extreme in the ancient world. And that's an extreme of, you know, the individual doesn't really matter. It's all about the greater good. But I bring that up because what I what I've been seeing in our in our cultural kind of landscape more recently is kind of this growing kind of utilitarian kind of value that's growing that's that's kind of growing that um, that you know what we 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 should the greater good and there's some that that maybe don't you know this this number for example with the virus you know it's it's only impacting this small percentage of people. And so why do we, okay, there's a lot that goes into how we handle the virus. I don't wanna get into that. But, but when, we, when we say things like, well, it's just this, this small percentage or it's just the, the vulnerable and they, you know, they can, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I think we, as Christians, we need to step back from kind of this other extreme of kind of utilitarianism that says, you know, for the greater good, we can sacrifice a few. Our antenna as Christians need to go up with that kind of valuing and devaluing of human lives. Um, and the parable of lost sheep reminds us of that. The parable of lost sheep was radical in the ancient world because it says even one of the 99 sheep are valuable in the Good Shepherd's mind and heart. And it's an important word for us in today's cultural landscape that yes, even one are valuable. The vulnerable are valuable. If someone's at risk of this virus, their life is valuable. If someone's life is at risk or because of of race or or whatever, their life is valuable in our Savior's eyes. If someone's life is at risk because they are an unborn child, their life is valuable in the eyes of the Lord. And any narrative that diminishes life, whether it is the life of a fetus, or it's the life of a person of color, or it's the life of someone who has health issues that make them more prone and vulnerable to this virus that we're dealing with, we need to be aware of that and remember that all life is valuable to our Lord. And in that, as Christians, to recognize that we have a call to be part of and to participate in our Good Shepherd's work of rescuing those lost sheep so that not one would perish. Friends, if we can focus on that, and if we can remember that, I think we're going to be better for it. And with that, the other word that this says is that, friends, your life matters to God. And so, yeah, we reject this kind of hyper-individualism in our culture that the world revolves, but we also reject this other extreme that wants to say, your life doesn't matter. You know, you're just one person. No, your life matters. In fact, as we are going to learn on Sunday, be reminded of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ that that reminds us that that Jesus left heaven, came to this earth to live with us, to show us what it means to live, to, to die, to give of his life, and he would have done that if it was just to save you. There is this beautiful truth and reality the world doesn't revolve around us, and yet the King of kings, the Lord of lords, 
loves us, loves you, and your life is of incredible worth and value to him. And so I'm just going to sing a song as, as we kind of just let that ruminate in our hearts, a song called How He Loves, which kind of just gives kind of some imagery um, and a reminder of, of how we are loved, not just as individuals, but as Christ's church, we are, we are loved by our Lord and God. And so if you know these words, feel free to sing along. Otherwise, just listen and uh, let God's love surround you. Damn shit by the grace. 
Lord God, we do thank you for your love. We thank you, God, for this parable that reminds us that you, Lord, are a good shepherd. And that, Lord, when just one of us goes off astray, Lord, Lord, you leave the 99 others to go find and rescue that lost sheep. Because, Lord, you, you love us. You love each of us who are watching. And Lord, you, you went to the cross. You gave your life because you loved each and every one of us. Lord, may we believe this truth. May we live in this truth. And Lord, may it change how we live and experience life in this world. And we pray this in Jesus, our good shepherd's name. Amen. Hey, Providence, be blessed this weekend. Uh, see you possibly on Sunday. And uh, let's continue to worship God, not just uh, on Sundays um, and through videos, but Lord, but in uh, how we live our lives, loving um, those in our world that God's called us to love. Amen.